Blessings, everyone. I hope you are all doing very well out there. It's time for another major astrological transit examination. And in this video, we are talking all about the solar eclipse new moon occurring at 29.5 degrees Aries on April 20th, 2023, and taking a deeper dive than we took in the monthly general astrology reports that are already up, of course, we're well into April. So if you haven't seen those yet, you can check those out, of course, by going to my astrology playlist. We're going to take a look at not only breaking down and demystifying solar eclipses and by extension new moons, but we're also going to talk about the connections that this new moon is making in its conjunction or near conjunction to the north node in Taurus, as well as the sextile it is making to Saturn in Pisces and the square that it is making to Pluto in Aquarius and what that spells for the next three months. If you are not familiar with my all-in-one style of doing these big examinations, I ask you please check out the down bar below. I have a list of every single sign and what areas of life are coming into chief focus for each sign. And make sure, of course, you are checking your rising sign, your ascendant, I'm also going to be leaving links to my Saturn in Pisces and Pluto in Aquarius videos so that you can get up to speed on what is going on with those two for the long term. We've got some big stories going on there. And don't forget to come back uh, at the end of every week. I, of course, have weekly tarot forecasts I put out and now weekly giveaways. So what is going on when it comes to this solar eclipse in Aries. So a new moon is all about new beginnings, new commitments, new long-term engagements, and it is also about a new seed getting planted in whatever the part of your chart uh, this new moon is occurring in for you. A normal new moon gets the ball rolling in um, a moderate way, you know, within about two weeks of the date of the new moon. A solar eclipse, however, is so much stronger and it can be a bit more intense and its effect lasts for about three months. And so this is really going to be a powerful, consistent influence going up until about uh, week three of July. Solar eclipses also differ, however, from new moons in the sense that they do create new long-term commitments that are extremely beneficial to us, but they take up a lot more space in the way we have arranged our lives, in the way that we have set up our schedule, our availability, our space, our resources. And it can require a bit of an adjustment period in order to take all of those blessings on. So over the course of the three months spanning April 20th all the way up until about July 20th, that is all getting very strongly pushed in. This is also a time where you may notice some displacements occurring in this part of your life or other areas of your life, especially with uh, Saturn and Pluto involved here, we'll talk about that in a second, in order to make room for a big life-changing commitment that is going to be highly beneficial to you, but also something that may require you to be ready to break with something that you have hung on to or have stayed attached to for a very, very long time that is no longer working for you, it's no longer paying off, or it's never going to come around. When we're talking about a solar eclipse in Aries, right? Aries is the pioneer, it's the go-getter, it's the sign of new beginnings, it's the fresh start of the zodiac. And so this can be also a very youthful energy, a very vibrant energy. This is going to bring a renewed sense of aliveness, not only to this part of your chart, but to the rest of your world. This is also going to be something where you're going to be getting a chance to make some fast breaks and some get some big breaks as we go through this next month, next three months. But you have to remember that we are taking on that sort of explorer, pioneer, go-getter kind of energy. And so you want to make sure that you are in a space where you understand that it might not necessarily follow a narrative 
or any kind of old structures or old plans or old setups that you have been working with so far. This can of course then affect other areas of your life, making things a lot more fulfilling, more enjoyable, more uh, creative, more lucrative. But remember, this is going to be a commitment that does change the life path as well as the life map that you have been working with, especially um, anything that could be going back about 12 years. And a lot of that also has to do with Jupiter in Aries sort of pushing and amplifying this even stronger than a regular old solar eclipse, which is already stronger than a regular old new moon. So we have a couple of aspects to also include in this examination to see how a bit of this is going to play out. And this is how you do astrology, right? You take the aspects and observe them one at a time and disseminate from them what you need to know about the shift that is going to come. So I'm not just going to bludgeon you with astrology jargon and try to convince you to, you know, hear me out because I'm throwing out a bunch of fancy words and aspects. In fact, we're also going to talk a little bit about what different aspects mean and what makes them different. So one of the most significant aspects of this is the solar eclipse and the sun are both loosely, but still in a very relevant way, connecting in a conjunction with the North Node in Taurus. So the North Node will be at four degrees Taurus at the time of this transit, and then we have just at 29 and a half degrees the solar eclipse. When you have a conjunction, all energies, all celestial bodies, all powers, all points involved in that connection activate at the same time and combine in their focus. So the North Node is all about our biggest challenges, our biggest rewards, and it is one of the few destiny point, life path, pre-life um you know, intentions that we can actually look at in the astrology chart, right? What is it we are here to learn, to accomplish, to achieve? What is a part of our journey for this experience? Where are our biggest challenges and biggest rewards, as in our biggest lessons, our biggest wins, our biggest accomplishments, uh, but also at the same time, where is it that we need to be ready to take on a whole new chapter in order to achieve these things. And that means also with the sun being involved, that this is going to be a fairly easy transition. The sun brings attention, enhancement, support, and growth, but we need to be okay with getting out of any boxes we may have painted ourselves into. This is also, of course, then meaning that we have an opposition to the south node, which is in Scorpio at the time. So the south node is like our crutch. That is our default. That is the comfort zone. That's what we're good at, what we're used to. The south node is the box itself. And so when we have an opposition occur, one side of the opposition is standing against and challenging the other. So the box is getting challenged when we have this occur. We also have a beautiful sextile occurring with this eclipse and the sun and the moon also connecting very positively to Saturn in Pisces. So a sextile occurs when one planet reaches over uh, roughly 60 degrees, uh, give or take a few uh, degrees here and there, and reaches over and lifts up another part of our chart as in two important areas of our lives at the same time share the benefits of one another. We are seeing a new beginning that is not just lifting up the area that the eclipse is occurring in, but we are also seeing it lift up another area of our chart at the same time. Something that, because Saturn has been there, has been going through its own important shift, its own important transformation and re refinement process. And for more information about what Saturn's doing in your chart right now, again, see the Saturn and Pisces video. We also have a square being activated by this to Pluto in Aquarius. And when we have a square occur, what happens is that we see 
multiple areas of life activate at the same time, and we need to be able to assess the needs of all of those areas. So what happens with this solar eclipse square to Pluto is that it is almost going to immediately create a new beginning, a new life uh, direction, which is very, very positive, possibly even something you've been wanting to happen for a long time, but it requires us to also walk away from what we think might be outstanding business or old stories that we don't need to finish, that we don't need to carry on, that we don't need to resolve, that we don't need to keep holding on to and see what needs need to be met in order to make that transition more complete as we go through the end of April into May into June and all the way up to week three of July. So that is the uh, solar eclipse in Aquarius in a nutshell. Again, don't forget to look in the down bar below to see what areas of life are coming into chief focus. Remember, this is about a new long-term commitment that is getting anchored and starting a whole new life direction story. But it is important to be ready. It is going to challenge everybody's comfort zones. So you all take care. Thank you so much for dropping by. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And if you ever want to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.